So is the view worth the climb? Um, I think the view is always worth the climb. Yeah. Hi Ray and welcome to Zephyr Travels. In this video we are exploring Canyonlands National Park. Canyonlands National Park preserves 37,000 acres of colorful canyons, mesas, buttes, fins, arches, and spears in the heart of Southeast Utah's high desert. Water and gravity have been the prime architects of this land, scalping layers of rock into rugged landscape that we see today. Canyonland preserves this natural beauty and human history throughout its four districts, which are divided by the Green and Colorado Rivers. Island in the Sky is closest to Moab and is the most visited of districts. The Needles is a farther drive and is a great for a day trip or backcountry hiking and backpacking. Here we are at Canyonlands and we're going to take the island tour and check out the uh, canyon. So come along with us. The Island in the Sky Mesa rests on sheer sandstone cliffs over a thousand feet above the surrounding terrain. Each overlook offers a different perspective on the park's spectacular landscape. If you only have a short period of time, Island in the Sky is the easiest district to visit. Many pullouts along the paved scenic drive offer spectacular views. There are hiking trails and four-wheel drive access roads that allow you to get into the backcountry area for day and overnight trips. As always, our first stop is the Visitor Center and we're going to check this out. This is Island in the Sky Visitor Center. Mesa Arch is the most famous arch at Canyonlands. Perched at the edge of a mesa top, this 27 foot long arch frames a view of the canyon far below the La Salle Mountains in the distance. This location is especially popular at sunrise when a group of photographers often lay in wait for the glow of the sunrise on the bottom of the arch. Our first stop is Mesa Arch and this is a short six tenths of a mile walk. I don't even know if you call it a hike. There is a little bit of elevation but it says it's pretty easy. So we're going to walk in and check out the arch. It's supposed to be very scenic. We're here at the arch and that's like right over there and there's a fair number of people, you know, posing in front of it and taking their picture. But here's the view, you know, behind the arch into the canyon and it's awesome. Yep. It was a short hike, but it leads to spectacular views. Yeah. Very good. I don't know if that's the best view in the park yet or not because it's our first view. Butch Cassidy and his Wild Bunch had a hideout in Canyonland. Robber's Roost was the nickname given to the canyon and surrounding area in southern Utah where the infamous outlaw Butch Cassidy and his Wild Bunch would often meet up and hide out after one of their big heists. The Wild Bunch would also spend up to a month or more living within these canyon hills 
and most lost men didn't know how to navigate. Robber's Roost was very secretive, with only a select number of visitors ever being brought to hideout. Mostly women who were romantically involved with the outlaws. We're walking into Grand View Point, and there's an overlook here. There's also a paved trail that you can walk on that takes you to other areas. The total distance is about a mile. We'll see if we do that or not, but we're going to check out the view. Because the views are pretty much everywhere you look, you're going to see the views. The totem pole is 305 feet, and it's... It's actually eroded sandstone. This here is Grandview Overlook Trail. I think it takes you all the way out to the point. Um, it's about a mile long, but it's one of those where no matter where you walk, the views are all pretty good. Well, you said you don't want to get to the edge for a selfie. Yeah. You don't want to get to the edge under any circumstance. Yeah, if you can't tell from the pictures, the edge is pretty much straight down, maybe yeah. a few thousand feet. And if you're afraid of heights, don't look down. Yeah, true. As she walks towards the edge. You're going closer than I want to go. Canyonland is a dark sky park. One of the pure joys, and there are many of visiting national parks, is that they preserve some of the darkest skies in the country. Canyonland National Park is considered one of these dark sky parks, where it is possible to see up to 15,000 stars throughout the night. As a matter of fact, night skies at Canyonlands are so pristine that the National Dark Sky Association designated Canyonlands as a gold tier national park. We stopped here at Buck Canyon Overlook. And I guess the, the thing they, that they point out here that you want to look at is there's some roads down there and such. Those roads were carved through here back in the 50s when they were looking to um, mine uranium. But the desert is very slow to change. And also the grasses, there's not a lot of grasses down there. That used to be areas where cattle grazed and they ate a lot of the grass. And since then, the grasses haven't had a chance to regrow. And we're talking 50 years. The thing of it is that there's such low rainfall here, about 10 inches a year, that it's very hard for seeds to germinate and get started into new grasses. So it takes a long time for the desert to recover. Canyonlands Park contains some of the most remote lands in all of the United States. The park is divided into three districts. While paved roads provide limited access to the Islands in the Sky and the Needles District, the Maze District is remote in the extreme. Island in the Sky is large and has a large and level mesa. Access to it is provided by an aerial section of rock known as the Neck. We've stopped at Candlestick Tower Overlook, and it's, it's, it's one that's not very well marked, so you may miss it, but it looks like it's got a couple neat views here that we're gonna walk over and check out. We think that's can, Candlestick Tower. There's another one over here. But we don't think that's it. We think the farther one is Candlestick Town. Canyonland contains a wide variety of plant life. This includes 11 cactus species, 20 moss species, grasses, and wildflowers. In the moister areas, visitors can find cottonwoods and willows along the riverbank. As a National Park Service notes, visitors will encounter a wide variety of species from tiny lynchens clinging to the sandstone to st steady cottonwoods growing in the canyon bottoms. This is Green River Overlook, so we're walking back here. I'm going to check this out. The, this whole area is made up of, made it, 
possible by the two rivers, the Green River and the Colorado River, both go through here and carved a lot of these canyons. If you look right through there, you're going to see the Green River. Right through where? Oh yeah, okay. 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 How about you? Okay. Of course, we had to climb on the rocks and pose for pictures. We're probably going to walk to the first overlook. I don't know if we do the second overlook, but we'll see how we feel. So we're hiking to Upheaval Dome. And the first part of the trail is a lot of steps and climbing, but I think it's going to level off a little bit once we get to the top and it's going to flatten out and be a little bit easier. There's two overlook areas here. The first one's roughly half a mile. Um, so we're going to hit to that one first and see how, we, how we're feeling. And if we decide to do any more, which the camera person's shaking her head, we're probably just going to do the one. I think the view is always worth the climb. Yeah. Scientists don't really know what caused this upheaval dome. Now there's two theories that they're working with. One is that there's a layer of salt here that got weakened, you know, disintegrating, got weakened and causing the um, rocks to fall in and create this uh, depression. The other theory is that it was actually caused by a meteorite that impacted the ground here and caused this depression. The working theory right now is the meteorite, that, but they haven't been able to prove that yet. Several movies have been filmed in Canyonlands. The famous ending scene of the 1991 Thelma and Louise was filmed above the Colorado River in Canyonlands National Park where they drove their beautiful Thunderbird off the cliff into the canyon. Also, 127 Hours, starring James Franco, which tells the story of Aaron Ralston, who got stuck in a slot canyon in the Maze District and had to self-amputate his arms to get free. This here is Schaefer Point Overlook, and as you can see, the really nice canyon views here. Probably, you probably really can't see how nice these look on on film compared to what they really look like when you're standing here. They're just spectacular.
So, Dan, what would you think of your one-day uh, trip through Canyonlands? I thought it was nice. Uh, yeah, it was a nice day. We did do a couple of very short hikes, and they were definitely worth taking to uh, see the views. Yeah, I mean, that's one, I think kind of the nice thing about this park. If you don't want to do long hikes, you don't have to. There are some short hikes that are like a half a mile or so that you know you can get some really great views at without you know too much work now they are kind of up and down steps and such yeah. so you have to keep that in mind but there's you know a lot of spots where you can just stop along the road and and see the view you know at overlook yeah there is parking available and uh, yeah, overlooks are great as well so if, if that's all you want to do a visit to Canyonlands is definitely worth it yeah, and you can do this park in a half a day. You could do this park and do a long hike in a day. It, it, you know, it's it's fairly compact and you know everything's fairly close. You know, and it's not really crowded. No, no, it probably is one of the um, I want to say the least visited, maybe. Yeah, it's probably one of the less lesser visited. Now we said that um, Capitol Reef. Capitol Reef is kind of uh, uh, overlooked. I don't know if this park is as much overlooked, it's just it's not as visited as much. Yeah, most people that come to Moab visit Arches, Arches. National Park. Yeah. And uh, we did that. And now with our, our finishing our visit to Canyonlands National Park, we have visited all five of the national parks in Utah. All five. And we've got videos of every one, so check them out. Um, we're Make a playlist or something and stick it at the end of the video so you can check them all out. Right. Well, guys, if you uh, haven't done so already, what should they do? Subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Give us a big thumbs up for this video. And, oh, when you subscribe, make sure to hit that bell for notifications. Leave us a comment if you've been to the five national parks in Utah. And which one you liked. Yeah. Until the next time. We will see you down the road. Bye, everybody. Bye.